was a roller coaster of emotions in the third round of the Champions League quarter-final stage. A first win for Marseille, an incredible comeback for Novi Beograd, and great games in Brescia and Barcelona. Welcome to the Water Polo Champions League highlights. The first Group A duel of the third round was played at Polyard. Yadran versus Marseille, two teams that experienced back-to-back -back defeats, were in search for their first victory in the quarter-final stage. And it was off to a great start for the hosts. Yadran took the lead in the first two minutes. First, through Lauren Fatovic's extra player shot and Jurku Marinic Klagic's penalty goal. But it didn't last long, as the guests answered with three goals. Tom Avernu, Alessandro Velotto and Andrea Polenovic found the back of the net to make it 3-2. Two extra players shot goals for each side and we were off to the second quarter. Goal after goal in the second period, but the men of the hour were the goalkeepers. Even Marcelic and Dejan Lazovic pulled off some incredible saves, such as this one, this one for example 6-6 six, six, with 16 minutes of the game still to go and it only became more interesting why because it was the turning point for the French side mostly thanks to Polenovic who was absolutely spectacular it was his extra player goal the second one of the game by the way and Hugo Crosiliad's goal that created the biggest advantage for Marseille it took almost six and a half minutes for Yadran to find the back of the net in the third quarter. Verlic was left alone on the right post, and Yadran took advantage of that once again to make it 8-9. But Polenovic was just unstoppable. He added the third goal to his tally, and what a beauty it was, with 58 seconds to go before the final eight minutes. Hopes went up for Yadran when Matias Biljaka scored from the counter and Zvonimir Butic tapped a minute later to level the score. A high-scoring affair continued in the last four minutes, but unfortunately for the hosts, Daniel Angel's action shot plus an extra player's shot both ended in Marcelic's net. 11-9 transformed to 11-10 with Antonio Dursevic's goal from the right post in the game. Deja vu, anyone? We saw Yadran use this recipe already, and we saw him already as well. What a match for Polenovic. He ended the game with five goals scored. With 75 seconds to go, and can you imagine, four goals fit into that time frame. Konstantin Korkov with a lovely six-meter shot, Polenovic, Marinic Kragic, and the final goal belonged to Vernu, who put the game to bed for the final score, 14-12 for Marseille. For the last two years, this was the final of the water polo champions league. Novi Beograd against Pro Reco was the most anticipated match of this round. Both teams entered this match without defeat, and first place in the group was at stake. The game started with granite defences. Delungo and Demichelis in goal were stopping everything. The first goal came after four minutes of play. Gondemi scores in an extra player situation. Proreco can score another one, but Zelansky literally drops the ball on penalty execution. Novi Beograd needed more than six minutes to score. Yaksic from the outside is too strong for Del Lungo. The second quarter went to the Italians. With excellent defence, Pro Reco was creating good opportunities. Canella is used as a team counter-attack to score for one two. That was the start of an unstoppable avalanche from the title holders. A quick barrage of goals gave Pro Reco a 1-6 lead. 38 seconds before the end of the second quarter and the game looked finished for the Serbian champions. Novi Beograd needed six minutes for the first goal. For the second one, they waited an additional 10 minutes of play 
until Bernard has converted a five-metre penalty shot. That was ten seconds before the end of the second quarter, but for Pro Reco, ten seconds is enough, especially if you leave Kakaris one-on-one on the two-metre line. The big Greek gives Pro Reco a 7-2 lead at the half-time. In the third quarter, Nove Beograd managed to stabilise the boat and reduce the advantage, at least a little bit. After three quarters, the Italians were still in control. After Jasic scored with a man of advantage, it was 5-9 for Pro Reco with eight minutes to go. At the beginning of the last quarter, Skumpaki sent a rocket to give hope to Nove Beograd fans and bring a deficit to minus three. In the next attack, Kakaris earns a third penalty for Pro Reco. This time, Fondelli hits the post and Nove Beograd responds with Filipovic. Reco's advantage is only two goals. The Serbian defence has no cure for Kakaris. The Greek centre gets another penalty. This time, Canella is calm and Pro Reco leads 10 7, four and a half minutes before the end of the match. That was the last goal the Italians scored in this match. After Filipovic scored his second in the match to reduce the deficit to two goals, Pro Reco has another penalty for the fifth in this game. Canella takes the responsibility, but De Michaelis on the Serbian goal stops him. That was the third wasted penalty shot from Pro Reco in this match. Only three minutes to go, and the game is wide open after Vucinic surprises Del Longo for 9-10. It was all Novi Beograd until the end of the match. In one minute and 47 seconds before the end, Skumpakis equalises with his third goal in four attempts. Nobody scored until the end of the match, so it was down to penalties to find out who the winner of this match will be. After eight successful shooters, it was Vucinic who wavers under pressure. Del Lungo saves, and after him, De Fulvio gives the victory to the title holders. The goalkeepers were excellent in this match. De Michaelis had 11, and Del Lungo 10 saves. The best shooters from both sides were not effective in this match. Granados was 1 from 9, and on the other side, Zelanke 0 from 4. the loss in Piraeus in the second round against Olympiacos, Barceloneta needed to win at home. The problem with that was the guests, the Hungarian champion Sferenc Varos, are undefeated in all competitions this season and are leading the group. Sferenc Varos needed a lot of attempts to get past Aguere on the Barceloneta goal. Fekete is the first to score, two and a half minutes before the end of the first quarter. Barceloneta responds with Munarith. Vogel cannot stop his shot from the outside. It's one all after the first eight minutes. Both teams start finding the net after that. First, Nemet with another goal from the centre position for the guests. The Catalans are back after a sweet Munarith pass for Peroni, and it's now two all. Barceloneta leads 3-2. Monalith fakes Vogel for another pretty shot from five metres. The hosts are finding the net in the attack, and in defence it's all Aguere on the goal. Mandic has the penalty, but Aguere and the post stop him. The Spanish national team goalkeeper is impossible to beat. By the middle of the second quarter, he already has nine saves. It's not enough to stop Ferenc Varos. First, Jancic uses an extra player situation. And then, in the last seconds of the quarter, Nagy gives the Frade the lead at half-time. As the game goes on, Ferenc Varos has a two-goal lead for the first time after Argyropoulos' goal at the beginning of the third. In a great game, both teams are giving their best. After goals from Pavilliard for 5 all and Varga from the outside for 5-6, Munarith is lethal again with his third goal in the match for 6 all. The game is on edge. 
No goals in the first three minutes of the last quarter. But then Ferenc Varos finds another gear. After Biel Lara reduced the advantage to 7-8, two goals from Fekete give Ferenc Varos a three-goal lead. The last one is especially important, as it was scored in the last seconds of the attack from far, far away. Barcelona attempted a comeback. Sanuja scored his only goal of the game, but then came the controversial moment of the match. Peroni scored after the ball was won in the middle of the pool. That goal was then annulled because the referees decided, but the Ferenc Varos coach called a timeout during that scramble for the possession. In the end, it finished 8-10, another victory for Ferenc Varos. Their goal of securing the final four is very close. Barceloneta on the other side will need to win on the road to achieve the same goal. Croatia entered the third round match as the only team without a point in Group B, whilst Olympiakos had one win and one loss. The Greeks started the game better. Already in the first attack after a well-played extra player, Alafragis scored. Two minutes later, Aliziani took advantage of the opponent's carelessness. He won the extra player and finished the action on the counter-attack for the first goal of the Italians. Until the end of the first quarter, it was goal for goal. The guests would take the lead and the home team equalised. So the first quarter ended with 4-4. Croatia's first lead right at the beginning of the second quarter was brought by Del Basso with a goal from the goalpost with an overhand player. A lot of goals were scored with a numerical advantage in the pool, so Dimu responded for Olympiakos at the end of the second minute. The situation was now reversed. It was Croatia who were leading and Olympiakos were catching up to their advantage. It was like that until the middle of the game in the second quarter, when Irving shot from the outside position to give the host a new lead. A reversal followed. After a quick play, Guvis first equalised. And the same player from the central position scored the next goal for the turnaround. And the lead of Havoye Kolyanin's team was 8-7 at half-time. Alessandro Borvo's water players had a new phase of good play in the middle of the third quarter. Dolce equalised after handling the goalkeeper very deftly. And the home team soon took a new and, as it turned out, last lead with a goal by Irving with an extra player from the right wing. And then came the decisive moments of the game. The guests completely turned the tables with as many as four goals in a row. Immediately in the next attack, Papi Anastasio, who did not have a difficult job, was forgotten. A minute and a half before the end of the third quarter, Vamos was accurate with an extra player from the right wing. And the same player scores once again from almost the same place, with numerical superiority. For Olympiakos, 12-10 after 24 minutes of play. The Hungarian representative continued to show at the beginning of the last quarter when he scored a wonderful goal to give his team a three-goal advantage and settle the game. A glimmer of hope was brought to Brescia by a very high-spirited Irving with a goal with an extra player a little less than six minutes before the end. However, there followed a period of as much as five and a half minutes without a goal, which was interrupted again by the Australian representative with a goal 16 seconds before the end. Olympiakos easily kept the ball in the last attack and registered a very important victory in the fight for the final four, while Croatia is now very far from the goal. These are the standings after three rounds. 
In Group A, Pro Reco and Novi Beograd have run away with eight points and seven points respectively. Marseille has three after they won in split. Yadran is still without a point. In Group B, Ferenc Varos is in first with nine points. Olympiakos is in second with six points. After two consecutive defeats, Barceloneta is third and Brescia is last. In the next round, Brescia will face Barceloneta, whilst Olympiakos play Ferenc Varos. Yadran come up against Novi Beograd and Marseille will challenge Group A leaders for Reco. We'll see you then.